So today, actually, we have to discuss about our past paper. So that is 2020 paper. That is my plan. And we'll be officially starting our past paper discussions with uh, today's paper. And please make aware the others because I'm not normally doing any promotions uh, in the classes. So what you can do is if you think this is a good class, you can recommend that to your friends and bring them in because uh, so we have proven results, but uh, again, I'm not showing the results and I'm not uh, like uh, promoting the results in social media or somewhere. So by now I got uh, around closer to 10 calls. And so as I know, all of them got A passes. That is a wonderful achievement for this year with that pandemic, right? Uh, because almost everyone who wrote the exam got A pass and that is a really wonderful achievement because I have not seen some students even, right? So some students recently joined the class within three months, four months, they have done, they have achieved their goals. Something to be happy. And uh, okay, let's start discussing. This is 2020 paper. And please note that before I start discussing, I must tell something, valuable points. So point number one, we are discussing 2020 paper. So we are discussing 2020 paper, but it's really easy to download marking scheme for this paper. So if you know, right, if you, for an example, if you know the answers, that doesn't matter because we don't want to answer this 2020 paper again. So that is not the aim of discussing this paper. Sometimes you might think, ah, 2020 paper. So we have the answers. This is not to uh, answer 2020 paper. We have to answer 2021 paper, not this. But true, by studying 2020 paper and 2019 paper and 2018 paper, by analyzing those, we are trying to answer 2021 uh, paper. So that is the plan right that is the plan so answer 2021 paper and that is the aim so initially in the dis in this discussion we will be discussing some more theories for an example when we are in the so let's say we, we are discussing when we are discussing 2017 paper or when we are discussing the sample papers when we are discussing sample papers we will not discuss theories much. But initial stage, actually per day, we will be discussing only around 10 questions. Because our aim is not to answer this paper. Our aim is through this paper. So we should know how 2000, we should imagine how 2021 paper looks like. That's the aim. Okay, question number one. Which of the following contains only input devices? So very easy question, straightforward. Multimedia projector, input means taking things in, but multimedia projector is basically showing you an output. So that is not input. Printer is also showing you an output. That is not input. Keyboard mouse inputs, printer output, keyboard is input, touch screen is both input and output, and joystick is also input. Monitor is output, light pen is input. Multimedia projector, again output, keyboard is also, keyboard is input. Mouse, keyboard, both are input, light pen. Yes, it is also input and joystick is also input. Therefore, answer four is the correct answer for this question. So we're asking about only input devices. Okay, so that is easy one. So I'll give you some time. So I'll, I'll give you some time to answer these questions. Question number two, three, four, and five. Can you answer? So you can see some answers already marked. But don't rely on these answers. This is a, actually a set of answers marked by one student. So you can't rely on that. So just try to answer the question number two, three, four, and five. And don't look at the marking scheme also. So that is a cheat. Because in 2021, you won't see any marking scheme. Think about 21. 21 already marked papers. No, you won't get that. 21 marking scheme, you won't get that. You get only the paper. So think about that situation where you get the paper and then answer this question. Two, three, four, and five. You can send the answers in the chat. Chat taking answer seven. Sorry, chat taking answer seven. Either pass up related theory ka te kama katakaram. Two, three, four, and five. Quickly do this. Quick tactic to think. One minute, enough. 
because you know these things easy if you don't know don't worry i'll discuss okay uh, question number 2 the three main functions of information system two is the information system will take inputs process it and produce output information system will take inputs process it and produce the output that is number one but in addition to this you should know little bit about information systems so let me explain so information system is basically created okay let's go to the document 4 five okay information system is basically created mcq questions we are discussing for following functions more this more generally information system generally information system will take inputs and process it and produce output that is general thing produce output and the input will be mostly its data or unprocessed thing and output will be mostly information so this is sometimes called sometimes this is called abstract model of information right abstract model of information information system is actually working according to abstract model of information which is data are taken data are processed and then information is produced so this is that is called abstract model of information actually other than that it has a detailed task think about the hardware so related to data capturing and input you have input devices so the task is data capturing and input the task is data capturing and input and then the second task is data representation remember about the binary that you have learned just think about the binaries that you have learned data representation we represented two status on and off using one zero on is one and uh, off is zero we just used two state we represented two status using one and zero and then we represented uh, letters using ascii american standard code for information interchange then we have represented uh, characters using uh, bcd ascii abcd unicode like thing we learn about that in grade 10 character representation we learn about image representation all these representations are done in the memory data representation and memorize that is done in memory basically dynamic random access memory is used for data representation and memorize or generally you can say random access memory and the next one data processing that is you know data processing so what are the processing devices that you have in your computer yes what are the processing devices there are two processing devices available can you remember their names two processing devices cpu mainly so one is central processing unit the other one is graphic processing unit cpu and gpu these are the two processing units available in your computer and then after that data storage that is happening for a long time storage you have storage devices that is for long time use we call secondary and tertiary storages and then after that you need to uh, express uh, express the feedback basically information present information so that is done by using output devices this is more details right how you can remember the devices in your 
hardware system. And then finally, so you have to communicate, communicate information to the outside world. You can write this, please write this. To do that, we are using communication devices. Actually, this is more detailed description for what is happening in the computer. This shows more details. So the, generally it is input process output, but this has more details. Kindly write down the English note. No need to write down the single one. Kindly write down the English one quickly. This is related to question number two. That's why I said I will discuss related questions too because we don't know the 21 paper, but we can imagine the 21 paper. So not just me, I can see what is the 21 paper. But after discussing after all the uh, after discussing all these questions, you will also see the 21 paper. When you receive the paper, you see the maker imam he in the kewagi. Nikam matakwira ganda the end paper. To do that, so you have to learn the theories attached to these questions too. So I'm just reminding these things as a revision, quick revision, right? Let me know after finishing. If you are done, please let me know. Let's move to the next question in the paper. So which of the following represent the units of measurements in computer system in ascending order of their size? Ascending. Ascending means increase in order. The smallest one is bit. Correct. The smallest one is bit. Then you have byte. Then kilobyte, then the megabyte, then gigabyte, terabyte, likewise it is increasing. So bit is the smallest one. If you don't know what bit is, bit means binary digit. Bit means binary digit. B-I-T, binary digit. It's zero or one. Off or on. In a switch, off or on. Related to a bulb, off or on. Related to a bulb, it's off, zero or on. 0 or 1. That is off or on. And then 4 bits together, we call it's a nibble. If you take 4 continuous bits, 4 zeros, 4 ones, 1, 0, 1, 0, something like that, it's called nibble. 16 such combinations can be there. Because 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 1, likewise. There will be 16 combinations for a nibble, right? But four bits is called nibble. And eight bits, eight such bits, two nibbles, or we call one byte. Please note this capital B and simple B. If you have something called MBPS, it means megabit per second. Sometimes it's like this, right? Megabit per second. Anyway, the mega should be in capital. Megabit per second. And if it is MBPS, it is megabyte per second. Actually, 500 megabyte per second is larger than 100 megabit per second. Why? One byte is eight bits. So you have to multiply this by eight. Eight into five is 40. So this is equal to 4,000 megabit per second. So capital B means byte, simple B means bits. That's a practice. Sometimes this is different in some other location in internet. But not that simple B represent bit and capital B represent byte. That is the general case. And then 2 to the power 10 bytes means 1024 bytes equal to 1 kilobyte. 2 to the power 10 kilobytes or 1024 kilobytes, 1 megabyte. 2 to the power 10 megabytes, that's 1 gigabyte. And 2 to the power 10 uh, gigabyte is 1 terabyte. Uh, 2 to the power 10 terabytes, 1 picabyte. We call pica or petabyte. Picabyte, pecabyte. Then after picabyte, pecabyte, then you have exabyte, setabyte, yottabyte. So that, those are the things available, right? But you need only the initial things. So note, please write that. If you don't know, please write that or take a snapshot and later write it. So since we have written one now, so let's take a snapshot of this. If something unfamiliar, take a snapshot. But remember this. The bit byte relationships and the nibble and megabit per second, megabyte per second, kilobit per second, kilobyte per second, these terms, please remember. 
Okay, let's go to the next question. In the next question, they are asking, which of the following shows the storage devices of a desktop computer in a descending order? Descending order of the capacity. Capacity, the descending order means highest to lowest. So what is the answer? Highest to lowest capacity. The answers given, Praveen says it is two. Dinura says it's two. Lashen, you have not answered the question. Descending order. Descending means larger to smaller. Register is small. Cache is larger than that. Hard disk is even more larger than that. Hard disk is large. RAM is smaller than that. And register is even more smaller than that. So that is the answer too. RAM, register, cache memory. No, no, no. RAM, register is like smaller than RAM. And cache is also smaller than RAM. But register and cache, the cache is bigger than registers. RAM, cache memory, hard disk. RAM, the cache memory is smaller, but hard disk is bigger. Okay, let me show these examples. So can anyone share your screen? Then I can easily show these things. So who's going to... Help me by sharing the stream. Just take one minute. Oh, no, no. Just take 10 seconds. Share it quickly. Okay, Praveen, thank you. So how to access task manager? You already know. So yes, you can right click here. This part is called task bar. So let me show that. This part is called task bar, the bottom line. And then you can right click somewhere in the task bar. Basically an empty place. When you right click there, you can see task manage is appearing. You can select that and then it will display this. Sometimes it will display fever details. Just click on fever details, please. Fever details, no, no, not there, here. This section, this section here. Fever details, yeah. So sometimes you will see fever details. Please click on that. Right. In case of fewer details, your task manager will look like this. But then you have to click on the more details to get the expanded view. And after that, you have to access the performance tab, the second tab, which is performance. Okay. And you can see the performance of your machine. There, you can see the smallest memories. But registers is, are not visible here. Registers are not visible here. But you can see the other the details like socket. Socket means physically how many CPUs you can connect. You can connect only one CPU. So it has four logical, sorry, four physical processors. Means in your computer, so it has four cores, similar to in your house, if there are four kitchens, four chefs can cook. But these four chefs are cooking like eight chefs. They are so efficient. Four chefs are there, but they are cooking like eight chefs. So that is why you can see eight windows. Those are logical. Physically, how many are there? No, how many are there? Eight. Then one page is there. I mean, my own company is not coming there. It is not one socket. So you can see level one cache, level two cache, level three cache. Uh, these cache memories are inside the processor. The processor can actually come. That the processor can attach to that. My cache memories are either inside processor. It's level one and level two anyway inside the processor, but level three is mostly outside the processor, but attached to it. It's like this. Let's say I have a biscuit. So I had a biscuit uh, when I was doing uh, single medium class, but uh, I actually have finished that. So let's say this is my biscuit. Actually, this is not the biscuit. So now, uh, so I have few biscuits. Let's say this is few biscuits. I want to eat them. And I'm keeping this in my hand means my random access memory. So that is the second one, right? Memory here. So can you go to the second one? The memory. Uh, that is actually what I am going to use now. Currently, These are two biscuits I am going to eat now. So that is, then it will go to my random access memory. Hard disk ke wati enne. Muli mati ena ra storage jige. Storage jige ngara ke na mama kanne ana hinda mama meka aragan. Hari. Ita pas se yaan ma ko CPU ke ta. Right. level three cash. processor processor It is level two cash. 
දැන් process එක අතේ තියාගෙන process එකෙන් එළියේ තියාගෙන කැල්ලක් කඩලා කනවා ඒක level 2 cash after that i'm again this uh, cho i'm biting this actually i'm mixing this using the tongue and teeth divide me e etarat space tiyenno ne ewa hariyata level 1 cash wage ekata me dat kiyanne hariyata mage tiyena registers wage hari ewa punchi e dat patare tida tiyenno ne hapanna dat tika alila nan hapanna ba registers e wage ekata pirila hari ekata terum ganna koy so understand the scenario this is biscuit and i have taken level 3 cash then to the level 2 cash then eat in by mixing it with saliva and using the tongue that is a level 1 cash and then the teeth are also processing this that is my registers that is how the memory hierarchy looks i just wanted to give you some idea this is the fastest memory is registers then the cache memories then random access memories etc okay let me go to the question now and i want to show you some diagram related to this because in future questions you will need this for answering and i have taken this from uh, actually the advanced level right so don't ask me why i am giving advanced level not not to uh, ordinary level students so for me i think uh, you have to be advanced to answer ordinary level papers that's why i am giving right just kidding but anyway this is really useful useful for your lifetime that's why i am giving this right so why this has all these things so you can see the registers are the smallest then the cache memory after that you have the main memory after that you have the secondary storage and after that the territory or tertiary storage and you can see when you go up the capacity will be lower but the speed will be high and the cost also high next time they can ask about cost who knows next time they can ask about the speed or they can ask about the capacity they can ask about these levels for all this question answer is this okay kindly write down this and i'll i'll give you whatever the note here in english medium quickly that's here so no need to write down this part excluding this part can you write down this part mena me kala vitara kliyada just write down this area no need to write down the single note here only the english part i'm just highlighting So please write down this part. I'll give these things as a separate note. Okay, I have highlighted. Please draw this in your book quickly. Do this and let me know because this is really essential for your next year paper. Definitely, you'll get a question from this area for sure. Matha kati ano recording ne kati ano YouTube beke daano ne samar elad ne public na daay do daane private thari daano ne ko hamari. දැම්මට පස්සේ මේ ඕගලන්ට ලිස්ට් මෙන් ලින්ක් එක ෂෙයා කරන්න. එක්සෑම් එක ලියලා යටින් ඇවිලා කමෙන්ට් එකක් දාන්න ආවා කියලා. ඒ තරම් ෂුවර් වෙනවා. What I have explained here except the read only memory right except the read only memory cache registers and main memory uh and main memory here are volatile so these are volatile memories volatile means volatile means it's depend on the voltage read only memory is not volatile read only memory is not a volatile memory because it's already written and it's in the memory but cache memory is volatile whatever they are in the cache memory is think about uh, so i said that i ate some uh, biscuits and now it's not with me so that's the nature of volatile memory it's not permanent you take it you process it and it's over now you process it after processing you won't use it it's over so cache memory registers main memory all are volatile depend on the voltage if current is there the memory is there if current is not there the memory is not there and uh, dynamic ram stores the currently accessing programs dram it stores the currently running programs and static ram is also uh that is uh, currently accessing program actually currently processing data and instructions those are in l1 l2 l3 cache and registers and sram is inside and attached to the processor uh actually rom stores the firmware rom is read only memory it stores the firmware firmware means the software programs installed by the manufacturers rom stores firmware and that is done by the manufacturer 
So examples for firmware, BIOS and bootstrap loader, those are examples for firmware. So this is a lesson actually, but I have revised that because uh, this will come for several questions. Okay, I hope you have finished writing. I hope you have finished writing. Right, okay, let's move to the next question. If not, please take a screenshot. Quickly take a, a screenshot before we move in, otherwise you will miss this. Please take a screenshot. So, and I'll move to the next question. Okay, I think time is enough. Right, the question number five, uh, question number four answer is then, uh, you know, descend in order, hard disk RAM and register. Hard disk has, uh, is the, high, has the highest capacity among these things and RAM is next and registers are having the lowest. Which of the following is true about the secondary memory of the computer system? Data here. So that kind of monkey we are a katagara. Data is not even near as the computer is switched off. It's not volatile. Yes, it's not volatile. That is true. Data is not erased, even the computer is switched off. That is permanently there. That is secondary storage. Yes, in secondary storage, permanent data is possible. Solid state devices can be used as secondary memory. Yes, nowadays we have hard disks, SSD hard disk, and we can use a pen drive as a secondary storage for booting even. We can use CDs, DVDs. So as SSDs, SSD, solid state means no moving parts. Pen drive, we can use a hard disk. Pen drive, SSD hard disk, memory card. It was a thousand. Keychain drive, thumb drive, pen drive, and comic eye. Eka cot, helavena cotasne, chalane vena cotasne, in the solid state kill again. It's not moving. A typical hard disk is moving. A typical hard disk is moving. Typical old hard disk, right? This is uh, anima drafts, animation. So if possible, I'll show that from anima drafts. If you go to this, you can see there's animation. So, so uh, actually it's showing how hard disk is working. And yeah, which one is this? Okay, here, how hard disk working. Here you can see the motion parts, moving parts are there. In the hard disk, there are moving parts. That is a typical hard disk, but SSD hard disk, it's really silent, no moving parts. Typical hard disk is moving. It has head, head is moving. Here you can see, head is moving. This is a normal hard disk. But SSD hard disk, pen drive, no moving components. So, so those are called SSD. Secondary storage can be SSD. 